I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin in the Garden of Pam and Tim Jara in San Diego. This garden was the high point of a tour sponsored by the San Diego Horticultural Society. It's full of color. This is a standard residential lot, but they have packed a lot in it. Pam is the artist and succulent expert. Tim is her expediter. He's got lots of great tips if you want to create <laughs> special living areas in your own backyard. Pam, we look forward to seeing your artwork. <laughs> and Tim is going to narrate some of his great ideas. So you created a series of outdoor living spaces here so that each area had a designated use. Correct, We, when we planned this out, we thought about areas to entertain the barbecue area and, and cocktails and, and sitting at the bar there. So we took four months of just kind of walking through to lay it out. And the best stuff is the paint that you use for like, they use it on football fields and soccer fields. And you can paint your, where you want things. There's the garden hose to show sort of more detail. Move the hose around and you go, oh, that's the path. Then. But that was how we laid it out ourselves. I said, well, let's just have a path over here in a succulent garden with the vegetable garden. That was all grass over there. Yeah. So you make it sound so simple, but there's there's some thought that goes into how you create vignettes and combine things. How big is your backyard? I don't know the square footage, but it's 180 feet from one end to the other with 17 of these glass panels opening up the space. Um, Are they high maintenance? No, I clean them a couple, you know, twice a year I'll go and, and, and clean them. But yeah, the guy who lived in here before us did it, and I thought it really, when I moved in, it was one of the reasons we liked the backyard so much. So this garden was originally developed and planted in 2007. Yes. Uh, and how long did it take to get it to looking like it was finished? With, with, with the big, well, the, so the big, the big, never, the backbone is exactly right. Pam's right, it's never finished. It's always evolving, but trees took a while and then when the drought was here probably in 2010 2013 we got rid of a lot of the high maintenance high water and that's when we started bringing in um, a lot of the succulents because of the they're much lower water it's on a full system but it's only basically six minutes uh, once a week um, probably a little bit more in the summer but and in the winter we don't use any you know we just let nature water what you do spot a weed these trees have been pruned really beautifully. Are you the tree pruner? I am. I'm a little bit more bushy and filled out, but I, I bring them up and then I actually kind of wind them in a little bit to get a little bit of the bonsai effect. They're a melaleuca. Yep. Also, back in 2007-ish is when we put them in. They were five gallons. They were only probably this high, maybe. Little tiny guys that have just... But when they were mid-sized, I'd say they were more of a bush looking, and then now we've let them grow up. I'd say about three years it's taken them to look like this, to get them to upward this high, three or four years. That's quite the jungle gym for Rocket. Yep. Yep. It was surprising how much it blocked the light. We didn't realize it until I had actually done it, how much uh -huh. more light. You get a lot more light um, coming through, and you also get a little bit more of the view coming through. She does most of the maintenance. Yeah, I do it. Sometimes I do a whole bunch and, you know, after the big spring growth and just cut, and other times I just come out here in the evening and just chop a little bit at a time. And before you know it, you're out here for four hours. Succulents really are low maintenance, yeah. but you have some high maintenance succulents. I mean, they, they, um, they're the pretty ones, the rosette succulents, and they tend to get leggy. You gotta be willing sometimes to take things out and, and and take trust that you're, the, yeah, take a little risk. He trusts my eye. Yeah. He really yeah. disagrees. If he does, well, we'll you're, work it out. you're a good team. You're the artist. You have the eye. And this is your outdoor yep. sitting area with, with the fireplace. The fire. Well, then you have an outdoor dining table. And I like how you've surrounded your post with the pots. It's a utilitarian thing, it's kind of in the way. Yeah. And it's not an eyesore, but when you surround it with pots, it disappears and it becomes part of the garden. So tell us about the totem. So there's this great place in Puerto Vallarta, Hacienda Mosaico, 
that I was introduced to by Marsha Rafter. Whole week working on art all day. I made that the base here when we got back. Stacked basically on a, on a large PVC pipe going through the middle. Do you go to succulent specialty nurseries? I go to Waterwise Botanicals sometimes, and sometimes I buy at our farmer's market on Saturdays. Yeah, they have some decent little ones if I need fillers. Um, but a lot of times at this point, I'm using cuttings from my garden. And Friends have different succulents, and so we'll trade off. Stuff grows, and you can cut these little kiwi aeonium and add yellow. You know, yellow with pink, yellow with green, and the pink caledonia play off the sunburst aeonium. This is what I call my aeonium garden. This guy's gonna break. I know he is. Okay. So I'm gonna cut him off. And then what? Well, ideally you should let them callus off. But since I know there's no rain coming and I'm not gonna water. Yeah. So you just dug a hole with your with your clippers. <laughs> I always do that. And sometimes they go off and flower. And they are monocarpic, which means when they bloom, that plant is gone. So Pam's got a blooming sunburst here. Oh, my most favorite. It's driving her crazy. And okay. she's going to cut it off right down there. I could put it in the face. Yeah, put it in a vase. You know, so sad. And you don't even need water. No. Got it? Got it. We're under a really nice patio cover. And what direction does this face? South. So that gets partial sun mm -hmm. and shade, like even in the hottest times of the year. These guys are so happy. Well, this is full sun. That's an interesting thing you've done there with the red crassula. It almost looks like one of your mosaics. I liked the green and the red. This is a kind of a gray green. And if you let it stress enough, you get those really beautiful pink tips. Yeah. Don't, the company went out of business. And so I had to buy a regular box, which I don't believe looks good, just sitting up high. So I had to add that little, F, the little deck there to get into the spa if we have to do maintenance. You have this utility area behind you and you, didn't really want to include that right. in your it, garden. It'd be just a wall because then I thought that'd be too confining. So this is actually just made out of bender board with uh, five posts and just woven in and out. And then I got the idea to rivet it rather than, you know, I couldn't figure out how to actually attach it, but I found that rivets work really well. And it lets air through and it's like zero maintenance. And and I got the bender board at Home Depot, so it, was, it wasn't like you had to go have some specialty fence company. Yeah. My next door neighbors like it so much, we built one at their house too. Yeah. The interesting ground cover has uh, many of the benefits of something like Diamondia that you can walk yep. on. It's uh, Carapia, and it, uh, we put it in about four years ago, and it's plugs that spread and then fill in. It's low water. Um, I could drive the truck or a trailer over it, and uh, it, it, it takes minimal maintenance, and it's pretty. Very nice and green. So From Japan. And the species we got was grown up in Fresno. And they ship it to you live. In a box. Plugs. How and did you hear about it? Through the Botanical Garden. San Diego Botanical Garden. Uh -huh. uh, the, uh, one of the members there mentioned it to me. Dave Erlinger. Dave Erlinger, yes. She's four years old. We started, uh, we had grass here, but it wouldn't do well because of the lighting and so I rototilled and it likes a nice loamy soil and then we just basically put in the plugs uh, spacing is based on how quickly you want it to fill it in it took a couple months to get this filled in but it, it, it was pretty good okay so I will have information on Corapia on my website and also in the video description okay. and but as long as you do a pre-emergent it stays pretty pristine so you're talking about a pre-emergent herbicide that's a powder that you apply yes. Yes. Probably in the fall before the first rain. So Pam, you are a retired nurse. What was your specialty in this? ICU and recovery room. I have an Etsy shop, Pam's Garden Art, and I, my website is Pam's Garden Art. I've been a volunteer at the Botanical Garden for 11 years, and yeah, she does tulip areas, and I do the trimming of the bamboo and keeping it basically looking nice. 
I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. My goal is to inspire you to enjoy using succulents in fun and creative ways in your own garden and outdoor living areas. Please know I appreciate your comments and do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.